is Mike Delapia. I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew. Great experience, super cool guy. I'm really glad I did it. I hope you enjoy it. For people who want to know what is the Keith Angie Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can sell them out to something. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any type of learning disabilities and disabilities that never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. So prove to them you can stem out to something. That being said, 26 minutes of your time. So the first one I want to ask you is you are an upcoming professional actor. And I actually have a whole bunch of questions. I'm like, oh, I never asked these before. So you're actually going to be the first. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> hey, I don't know where it's got to go, but it is professional, of course. So don't <laughs> worry about that. Whatever, man. I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, uh, you won't scare me. We're good. Yeah, usually I always stay on the first page. I'm like, you know, uh, let's do something different. How about we flip the page and we have it done <laughs> easy? So the first Lucky question. Lucky okay. me. <laughs> so the first question I'll ask you is, what makes you a good role model? Well, you know, um, I had uh, so I'm originally from New Jersey. And, uh, you know, I was employed there for quite a while as an IT guy. And uh, I had really wasn't interested in living in New Jersey anymore. I was getting a little tired of snow. Uh, so I decided uh, to pick up my bags and uh, move to Florida. So I took everything uh, and let go of everything and uh, came to Florida where I knew nobody I didn't know one person here, didn't know anything about where I moved. I moved to Orlando and I started my own IT company here. And uh, it took a while, but that was 18 years ago. And um, it was a lot of hard work and it was a lot of sleepless nights and weekends and just uh, tons and tons of uh it's just hard to explain when you own your own business, you know, what it is, the amount that of uh, time and energy it takes from you. But I sold that business in uh, December. Uh, I had a company come in and offer me some money for it. And it was, it was more money than I ever thought I'd see in my lifetime. And um, I, I, it's, it's hard to believe that coming here literally with an unemployment check in my pocket, you know, amounted to what it amounted to 18 years later. It's just, it's insane, you know, but it's just, uh, so what makes me a good role model is it's just hard work and grit, you know, it's just, I'm proof of that. You know, if you work hard and you're honest and you're good at what you do, you know, success comes. I agree with you. Yeah. Now I didn't mean to laugh, you know, my head stupid radio, and I know it's not one of the questions, but I want to throw it out anyway. Um, I recently bought a radio and it, it kept crackling. I'm like, okay, what do you expect from a $20 radio? Good deal, $20. If it breaks, big deal, throw it in the shitter. <laughs> Makes it uncensored. They you know, just throw it in the shitter, $20 or whatever. No one cares. Yeah. And I was sitting there and it was crackling. And I was like, okay, make sure the sound's off. It's, everything's fine. But it is randomly, like, it just crackles. And I'm like, okay, I bought a new one. And this one is called uh, Gen C, Gen C. And I was like, okay, that's a $50 one. Has to be good. Has a CD player. Can't be a big piece of crap. But I'm sitting here, and I'm listening. And I was on a stupid thing does the same crackling again. And I don't know if one of the other questions I want to ask you is, do you believe in life after death? And my sister is like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, ghosts and energy, because we're all made of energy. They really like so electronics. And I was thinking, OK, that's true, because I do believe in John Edwards. I don't think he's a phony. There's a lot of phonies out there. There is. Uh, you know, it's kind of like because it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens spontaneous. You know, it's really hard to explain. But actually, while we're on the subject, do you believe in a life after death? 
So that's a tough one because I'm one of the I, I kind of I'm one of those people that I guess you'd say I dance on the line a little bit. You know, there's days where I'm, you know, I'm like, yeah, maybe there's something. And but at the same point in time, I <laughs> I try to err on the side of caution because I'd like to be around here as long as possible. Because if I can't see it, feel it, touch it, you know, uh, smell it, uh, I have a hard time with it. So um, right now, I know I'm here and I'm I'm doing what I do in the here and now. But I would love to think that there's something after this because. Uh, it's a lot of fun being me and I never want to stop being me. So uh, I really hope there's something out there after this because I, I don't want to stop doing what I do, even if it's some other afterlife space. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I guess you, you consider me a, I'm like right on the line, man. You know, like, you know, I'm right on those days. Like I said, there's days I'm like, yeah, man, there's, there's something after this. And then there's days I'm like, eh, yeah, not so much. You know, it's funny. My dad worked in a religious school. And at the time he asked a rabbi, you know, do you believe in John Edwards? So that's another question I was going to ask you. He's like, oh, you know, John Edwards really good. It's like, you know, he's really spot on. And it's, I was like, okay, well, well, do you believe in life and um, life after death? Eh. <laughs> It, it's kind of like, well, you were just saying, you know, you can talk to dead people. So therefore you do believe, but you, I mean, it's one of those things like, yes, you do believe, but you don't want to admit it. But I've seen John Edwards a couple of times, you know, funny stories, not meant to be funny stories. Um, and for most things like professional wrestling, do they put people in the audience? Like for an example, uh, he's, he's also from New Jersey. Um, Santino, Santino, Santino Morella, you know, he was in the audience. It's like, oh, they're, they're just going to pick a random person. But if you don't know the business, he was already, you know, behind the scenes and he was planted there. Yeah. So the question that I bring that up is I went to John Edwards and he's like, oh, I see his family and what's in my sex. And I see your family. Um, there was an accidental shooting, and but they covered it up. But the person's here with me right now, and they want me to tell you it wasn't accidental. Family behind me stood up, says, "Yeah, to respect for my mother, we don't want to talk about it." But yes, that is us, and it was accidental. And he says, "Well, the person's here with me right now, and he wants me to tell you that the police covered it up, and I need to talk to you after the show." So John Edwards has intermissions. Yeah, I think he did. This is like a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to take a little break. That family got up and never came back. So there's a lot of questions like, well, anyone in this audience had someone who passed away, who had cancer, who had this, who had that. Okay, you're just spitballing out of 10,000 people. One of those is going to hit. But yeah. how exactly did you know about something? I mean, it's one of the things like, okay, he has people planted in the audience, but at the same time, it's kind of like iffy, iffy, if that yeah, makes sure. sense. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, as you know, there's a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, bullshit in that space. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's people that prey on people's, you know, their, their grief, uh, you know, and it's uh, that sad, you know, for people to get some sort of monetary gain uh, off of uh, other people's sadness. Uh, you know, my wife and I, we, you know, we don't have kids, we have pets. Um, and our pets are like our children, you know, we, we love them to, to this, it's so unbelievably much that, you know, it's, it's, it's super special. So when we lose one, it's just, it's devastating and it hurts. And uh, we lost one not too long ago. That was super special to us. And uh, his name was Zeus and he was a cat. And uh, we, you know, you, you try to do everything you can to figure out, you know, how can you make sense of this? And can you, 
can you uh, can you speak to him somehow? Can you reach out to him somehow? And we found some lady online that claims she was able to talk to deceased pets and get you in contact with him. And so, of course, you know, we ended up paying this lady a boat, to, you know, a ton of money. And, you know, it ended up being this 40 minute phone call with some lady just it was just bullshit, you know, and uh, it's just sad that, you know, we fell prey to it. But, you know, when you're in the situation we're in and like a lot of people are, you just you, you'll grasp at anything. You know, it's whatever whatever you can do to just get that one extra minute with that person or animal, you know, you'll take it. No, I agree. I didn't mean to impose on you. I like my questions to be spontaneous. Yeah. But you you do bring up a point about because con otters is my parents almost fell for a scam. Recently, we got a white Kareem golden retriever. Uh, my dad calls her a, a white Russian because her ancestry is Russian, well, Scottish, and well, Polish, but mostly Russian. Yeah. And before we got her, we were looking for all these different dog groomers and trainers and breeders and we found this cute dog and it's like oh six thousand dollars and i said okay luckily the bank stepped in we have chase good thing chase stepped in and said we can't approve it then we found out afterwards they were a scam so they said oh you want this cute picture of a dog we have this dog here ready to go give us six thousand dollars and she's yours they take the money, you get no dog. So you know, there's so many bullshit artists out there, yeah. and especially on social media. You, oh, know, yeah. you know, that's the next question I want to ask you. You know, have you ever wanted to get um, referred or chastened? Like right? someone to reference you, not just reference you, but uh, represent you, like agents and publicists. You've seen so many different videos on Instagram and Facebook. They, Give me 15 minutes of your time. And or have you seen these big name brands like Fox, CNN? Watch this video and I promise you in two minutes we can get you booked. And of course, I know big disclaimer, bullshit. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? I, I don't, I'm not doing anything. But I'm not paying you. Let's just see how it goes. And it's like free. And at the end of the conversation, $32,000. Okay, we can knock it down to six hundred. dollars You just said it was free. You were going to say you have a great yeah. story. And it's so with you being in the entertainment world, how have you ever found an agent that it's legit? And how do you find a legit agent than the BSers? Um, so I tend to, you know, in the independent film world, from at least the world I'm in right now, it's a it's a it's a pretty tight network of people um so we all kind of talk amongst each other you know we even have a facebook group that we're all in where we compare uh who to stay away from who to who to kind of be with um so you know as you know in this industry there is a lot of bullshit out there so you have to weed through that of course but that goes with anything so um i just i do the research you know i i I, I, I don't get involved with people I, I don't know anything about. Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to know somebody. It had to be a personal referral, like from somebody that I knew uh, that has done business with that person. Or it'd have to be someone that, you know, um, just has, you know, a, you know, an undeniable list of talent underneath it um, that I've actually witnessed. So, um you know, you just have to be smart, you know, it's just, you just have to kind of, like anything though, you do like, like, you know, your scenario with a dog, you know, it's the, it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's all research, you know, you do the research and, and make sure you know who you're dealing with. No, absolutely. Now going back on topic about your acting career, how long have you been an actor? And for people with learning disabilities who want to follow in your footsteps, what word of wisdom can you offer? So, you know, it's funny. So when I sold my company in December, um, I, I I have a bucket list of things that I just wanted to do. You know, you know, see Dracula's castle is on my bucket list. Like there's just things I wanted to do, you know, uh, which I did, by the way. Um, but uh, so uh, one of them was I wanted an IMDb credit. That was literally all I cared about. I just wanted to get on IMDb because I'm like, 
once I'm on there, it's there forever. Hey, I'm done. Bow out. Thank you very much. Uh, so I had got involved with a uh, project with the Mahal brothers, uh, which was Night of the Tommy Knockers, and uh, they, um, I got a, sm I had a small part in that uh, film, and I really was not sure how it was going to go, just simply because I had never done anything like that in the past. I had never acted. I'd never. Um, I'd always been in front of people because I was a drummer my whole life, so I've, I've kind of gotten used to performing, but uh, I'd never acted. But um, so I just said, I'm, I'm going to wing it and see what happens, you know. And and um, when I got there, that film shot in um, Yucca Valley, California. And uh, when when it was coming time for my scene to come up, I was extremely nervous and uh, I was noticeably shaken. And, you know, there was a guy there that um, I had kind of befriended that was on the other side of the bar and uh, his name is Dave. And he had kind of put me at ease a little bit. And uh, once they yelled action, you know, it was really crazy, man. Like something just clicked in me and it just felt right. You know, like you, you kind of know when, when you're doing something that you that you're kind of either not, I don't want to so much say meant to do, but just something that you're going to enjoy, and uh, it just clicked in me, and I loved it so much. I was like, "Holy shit, I can get used to this. This is awesome." And then you know, I think I shot two or three days out there with those guys, and it just kept getting easier. And then as I've done more things since then, uh, you know, every time I do something, you know, I was co-lead in a movie with the Mahal brothers again. Uh, arena wars where I shot out in Vegas for 21 days and I had a pretty large part in that film and I worked with a, a tremendous group of like just unbelievable people the the support was amazing the, the other actors were amazing and uh so I haven't been doing it very long to answer your question but it's uh it just feels right it, it's like one of those things that feels so natural to me uh it's I love it and I, I just want to keep doing it I'm almost it's almost like a drug, you know, you're just like, this is just like, let's keep going. What can I do next? And what, you know, how, how, how much further can we go with this? Because it's just, it, I never want it to end. And, and so to your question about what I could say, you know, for people with learning disabilities, uh, you know, you just gotta like, when it, I've always been a do whatever you want to do kind of person, you know, I've never really thought too much about limitations which can be dangerous, you know, for some people, but I've never really worried myself with, ah, shit, what if something goes wrong? Like I just do shit and whatever happens, happens, you know, like what's the worst that can happen is the, oh, I've always looked at it. Like, so try everything and anything, you know, because you just never know, like, you know, you could really surprise yourself and be really good at something that you really had no idea you were good at. Um, so you know, that's my advice, you know, try any and everything and literally worry about nothing. Consequences, whatever, you know, like, it, you know, it, it's it, failure is how you learn, you know, you, you know, so if you're not, you don't try things and fail, you'll never go anywhere in life, you know, so that's my soapbox moment. <laughs> no, absolutely. And now the next question I want to ask you is, what experience do you have in weed and others? And did you ever attend an acting uh, class or school? No, you know, I've, I've really none. You know, um, I, it, this is still pretty new to me. Um, I've done some stuff online. You know, I've taken some online courses, you know, and, and, I, and I, I'm, I read a lot. So I read a lot of books on acting, but I've never really taken any classes or like, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm thinking about maybe doing it someday, you know, just to maybe kind of hone in on the craft a little bit, because I clearly don't know what I'm doing. But, you know, for now, it's working. So it's it's I'll just keep rolling with it. But, uh, you know, but as of right now, no, I've never, I haven't taken any classes. No. no, absolutely. And how about weed and numbers? No, you know, like so, I, you know, I. I've been the owner of an IT company for 18 years and I, you know, I have a staff there. Um, so my leadership comes from that, 
mainly, you know, that's more where I've, I've, I've learned leadership and learned how to, you know, kind of run a team and how to uh, help people get through things. Um, but that's my team here. As far as uh, what I'm doing now, um, I, I really haven't done anything in that space just yet. No. What about, this one sounds really good, but to say, actually I had it and I <laughs> forgot where it was. Uh, this is actually on everyone. Let's see. What is the most difficult part of being an actor for you? Um, remember my lines. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. advice. Yeah, it's one of those things, man, where, you know, uh, you could, I, I sit here and, I, you know, I'm a perfectionist by nature, you know, so I, I have to be, no matter what it is I do, I have to be really good at it. So, uh, when it comes to my lines, you know, before, like I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to New York to shoot a scene in this movie Z dead end. And, um, I've been sitting here, uh, just like reading my lines over and over and over and over again. But as you know, no matter, you can read them a million times, but sometimes, you know, your nerves get the best of you. And then, you know, you, you get in front of the camera and they yell action. You're like, Oh shit, what am I supposed to say? You know, it's, it just, you know, you just draw a blank. But uh, so that's my biggest challenge is, is the lines. Uh, other than that, I, you know, it's 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 not that bad. It's just if there's a lot of dialogue, you know, challenging. No, I feel the same way. You know, I'm not good at reading a script, but if you give me like short sentences, you know, yeah. then it gives me the confidence and then we can build on that. Of course. So the other one I want to ask is as an actor, what values do you have? Uh, you know, my values are, you know, I work hard. Uh, you know, I believe in grit, you know, so I'm one of those people that if I do something with you, uh, you know, if you bring me on to do something in your film, um, you will get 200% of me. Uh, you know, so that that's really what my values are. I take what I do so serious. Um and some people could say that's, you know, can be, you know, it could be a quality and it could also be a, you know, uh, it could cripple you at the same time. But because, uh, you know, I'm never happy unless I'm giving you 200%. Like I have to give you 200% of what I'm doing all the time. Otherwise, it's just not good enough for me. No, I agree with you. You know, I don't do my talk show for, you know, shits and giggles. You know, I'm not doing this for a kickstand or a joke. I want to do this to the on the day I'm six feet under. You know, I do this for the past, been doing it for the past eight and a half years. That's awesome. And thanks to you, we're up to 880 episodes and people who I met. So I'm close to my goal of 900. And this is, you know, I'm not qualified to go to high school. Well, not qualified to go to college because I read and learn at a middle school, high school level. Uh, I'm on the spectrum of being retarded. But I'm showing you, as I said in the beginning, the labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. To prove that, you can stem out something. Yeah. With that being said, look at what I was able to accomplish eight and a half years. Well, with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to you for the last three minutes. The last question I want to ask you is when I first approached you, be a talk to be a guest on my talk show. What made you say yes? How do you feel now? And what do you recommend it to other people? Um, you know, so like I said, I look at everything. So when you reached out to me, I, I, I did the research to see who you were and, and what you would probably want to talk to me about, because to be all in all honesty, in the world of Facebook, I get the amount of Facebook messages I get on a daily basis from people asking me random questions and be a part of this or do this or ask me this. I say no to a lot of things just because, um, you know, it just doesn't seem genuine. Uh, but when I did the research on you, uh, I liked what you were doing and I like what you stand for and I respect what you're doing. So that's why I wanted to talk to you because uh, I think it's super cool what you're doing. And uh, I, I, I applaud you for that. Uh, so now that I've done it, you know, it's, this is everything I thought it would be, you know, and even more, you know, uh, you're, you seem like a super cool dude, which is, uh, 
you know, pretty awesome. And uh, I'm happy for you. No, I really appreciate that. I do have a couple of questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, how can our fans and listeners follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn? Instagram is at Mike Delapia. So it's at M-I-K-E-D-E-L-L-A-P-I-A. That's pretty much where the most activity is. No, absolutely. Now, wrapping up our show, you know, one thing I'll say to our listeners on the bottom, if you're watching on YouTube, where it says comments, leave your comments. If you have any guests you want me to interview, any ideas, I love to interact with my fan base. If you're watching on Facebook, same exact deal. Make sure to hit that bell icon notification and you will be notified. Our brand new interviews will be available on Facebook and YouTube while wrapping up our show. It was a real honor and privilege having me as a guest. I want to say thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to part two. And as I always say to our listeners, until we meet again, I will catch you later. Mm-hmm.